Hey, this is YBR back with Google Chrome, Automation, the car company tycoon game, and Beeman G Drive. Yes, there will be all three in just this single video. And in this video, we will finish creating our knockoff version of the Charrier Vivas in Automation. And you'll notice, the design of the vehicle is complete. I decided since designing the vehicle is a lot of fiddly bits that isn't really entertaining to watch, I would design it off camera and then I'd go over all the things I did to try to make it look as close as I could to the actual vehicle I'm trying to duplicate. So how about we start with the rear of the vehicle? This is what the vehicle should look like. So I made a list of all the key parts that I want to make sure I have on my vehicle. On this list, I had upper brake lights and lower brake lights, the badge, the piece of plastic around the rear window, the cooling area for the brakes, the weird carbon fiber strip on the bottom, the license plate, and then the quad exhaust. And this is our vehicle. Starting with the upper rear tail light, that looks identical because it's literally just a rectangular light. Very, very easy to clone. The plastic piece around the window, however, is very different. It's a different angle and it's quite a bit larger. And the best way I could find of reproducing the plastic bit look was adding a second window on top of the window that's already there. So this piece here is actually the original window. Why did I do it like that? Because that was the only way I could make it look lush. Anytime I tried to add like an actual plastic bit here, it would either look like an indentation like this down here or it look like a big old bump and it just never looked right. So. It's not the same shape, but it keeps that smoothness, which I thought was more important. Going to the logo, we are using the automation logo here because it's an automation car. And then the rear brake light. Now, surprisingly, there was a single light that looked very similar to the ones used on the car we're trying to clone. The biggest difference is this one has two strips of chrome and the original only had one strip of chrome. Moving down, we have the license plate which is a European style license plate, just like in the screenshot. We have a quad exhaust setup, but the shape is a bit different. We have squares. And in the screenshot, it has these curvy looking bits, which there is no way to clone in automation because in automation you have square exhausts or circular exhausts, not whatever shape that is. That's just its own unique thing. And then for the bottom carbon fiber bit, I have one that closely resembles the shape you saw. The biggest difference, however, is mine also goes along the very bottom of the vehicle where the one we were trying to clone, it just kind of goes up, over, down. There's no lower section on that one. And then have the rear cooling ducts for the vehicle. And that is the rear. Overall, the rear was probably the best part. Now, mind you, I am not good at designing vehicles in automation. I am frankly terrible at it. I most of the time end up just designing something dumb because I have more fun trying to do something dumb and weird looking than actually trying to make a reasonable looking car. So this is probably the first reasonable looking car I've tried to make in two or three years, if not more. It's just not something I do. Anyhow, let's go ahead and move over to the side profile of the vehicle. This is the goal. And for this side, the most important thing was morphing the shape of the vehicle so its dimensions are as close as I could get it to the original. On this side, the only really details I worried about was this little itty bitty window after the regular windows, and then the way the lights kind of go up on the front bumper. And my vehicle does have those two features. It has the itty bitty door, and then it also has the lights encroaching onto the front bumper. Unfortunately, I couldn't encroach them far enough because then they just look stretched and hideous. That's as far as I can make them go without them starting to look weird and wacky. On the rear door and the rear fender, there is an additional indentation. Because if we go back to this screenshot, you can see the original has an indentation there as well. And it reaches almost all the way back to the rear taillights. And of course, we need some door handles and a mirror. Now for morphing the body, I had to make quite a few changes. First, I made the front bumper longer. Then I made the front fender a little bit wider. I made the windshield extend out as far as it could, but in the original, it seems like the windshield starts here. Unfortunately, it won't extend out that far. I made the front door a little bit longer and the rear door a little bit shorter. I messed around with the angle of the rear hatch to make it match as close as I could. 
And then I messed around with the rear bumper. I think I made that just a smidgen longer, but in the end, it wasn't really changed that much. And that got me close to the body shape I was trying to clone, so I was happy with that. Now, let's go ahead and move over to the front of the vehicle, and uh, this is where things get a little bit ugly. And if you look closely at this picture, there are actually two different designs here. Same goes for the rear of the vehicle. There are two different designs. The design I'm copying is the sportier version, and you can tell that the yellow one is the sportier one because it has extra cooling in the front, and then it also has the ducts to cool the brakes. So on this one, the key features I wanted to copy. The really interesting looking headlight design. The cooling ducts. This piece of carbon fiber, or at least it looks like carbon fiber, it could just be plastic for all I know, but you know, I see a thing like that and on a sports car, I like to pretend or at least assume that it's carbon fiber. The double grill setup, the license plate, and then the logo. Let's start with the worst part, the headlights. Yeah, it kind of has the shape, but that's about it. It doesn't have the really fancy curvature that you see in the original. And originally, I tried to stack like a dozen headlights all on top of each other, trying to clone the curvature. It did not work well. It just made this big mess of lights all over the place. So I say, you know what? Simplify it. We have one light that goes side to side, one that goes up and down, that's it. And it looks good enough. Doesn't look good, it looks good enough. Then we have the extra light down below as well. We have the cooling duct for the wheels over here. That turned out pretty well. And then we have the carbon fiber strip. And this thing actually is a little bit wacky. Because what this actually is, it is a racing front bumper that has like really aggressive aerodynamics. And then I flipped it upside down. So let me show you what that actually looks like, because this is the weirdest part of the whole design here. So this is an example of what the piece actually looks like and where it would actually be used if it wanted to move over here. Come on, get over here. Over here. There we go. So you put it on your bumper and it would look kind of like that, right? The problem is, is when you flip it over, it leaves this giant gaping hole in your vehicle. So I had to fill in that hole with just this extra piece, which I think is technically a sunroof. Yeah, it's technically a sunroof, but it's painted the same with the body. And it kind of looks like one piece. You really can't tell if there's a giant gaping hole there because that's a racing front bumper that's been flipped upside down and it's actually gotten all screwed up. What have I done? All right, let's just do undo a couple of times until it looks right again. I don't know really what happened here. That, that does not look right at all. I have completely ruined this thing, haven't I? Well. That's unfortunate. I was really happy with that piece and now it's broken. I gotta try to fix it. There we go, I just hit undo again, okay. So yeah, that was a complete disaster, but it has like the perfect shape to it, I love it. That is my favorite part about the front. We have a lower grill that looks pretty close to the original. License plate, upper grill. Not exactly the same design. It has like those prominent vertical bars, but there's a lot more in this one. We have a little indentation here that kind of just covers up the fact that it's a really flat sunroof piece. And then we have the lack of a badge. There used to be a badge there. I think I just undid it when I was clicking undo a lot because I was like the last thing I put on. I'll add it back later, probably. So that's the front, side, and rear. What else is there? Well, there's the top. One thing you might not know is that it has this stripe up top. And you can't actually see the stripe in any of the screenshots. The only reason I know it has this stripe is because you can see it in the video. If we can scroll up far enough for the video, there it is. So if you look at the video, you can see there is the stripe going across the top of the vehicle. It looks like an exact match, really. So that's the design of the vehicle covered. I don't know why there's a little triangle sticking out in the rear. It just does that now, I guess. There, just, yeah, there's a triangle there. And now we can go ahead and move on to the rest of the parts of the vehicle. Well, I guess we should have covered the trim body first. We chose the four-door hatchback because we're making a four-door hatchback. For the paint color, I chose the BeamNG green. Like, this is the green color that you always see in BeamNG screenshots. I guarantee you at least one of the vehicles on this page has that green color. Let's see. There it is. Very first screenshot. The BeamNG green. Fixtures. We just covered all of that. Drivetrain. I put a temporary setup that's just the easiest options available in the vehicle so that way I could have it where I could put the bigger wheels on it to make sure the wheels looked right. 
So the actual drive type we want, we want all wheel drive and we know it's gonna be an all wheel drive vehicle because it's stated so in the blog post. For the gearbox, I'm gonna give it an advanced automatic transmission because you can tell in the video posted that it's using an automatic transmission and since it's an automatic transmission from 2020, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and assume it's an advanced automatic transmission. And we'll give it an eight speed. So this would be like the ZF uh, eight speed transmissions that are out there. The top speed, we'll just stick it to something crazy like 200 and reduce it later. Same goes for the spacing. For the differentials, it's stated. The Vivas will be among the first cars to feature a fully electronic all-wheel drive control. I'm assuming an electronical limited slip differential would be the equivalent to that. For the power distribution, we're going to give it a little bit of rear bias because the rear bias is always more fun. Over to the tire type. We're going to give it radial tires, of course, because this isn't 1942. We use radial tires. We'll get the sports compound because it's the sport version of the vehicle. And then for the tire size, I already messed around with it a little bit. I gave it 245s in the front and rear, so it's a symmetrical setup. And I chose 245 because that seems like it's about the upper limit used on a lot of the hot hatches. And I mean the hot, hot hatches, the ones that actually have like 400 horsepower, like the AMG ones. And then also like the TTRS again. That's about the size they use. And then for the wheel size, it looked like it had pretty big wheels. So I gave it 19 inch wheels. For the material, we can go ahead and make a uh, alloy. Yeah, it's totally reasonable to have alloy wheels on this thing, but the look, I'm looking at those, those don't look like alloy wheels. It took me a minute to find where the wheels were to change them. So I went ahead and edited that out, but there are the new wheels that have kind of a similar design to what you saw on the vehicle we're cloning. So now we can go ahead and move over to the brakes. And for the brakes, we want vented disc. We'll put four pistons in the front. We'll put vented disc again in the rear. And then for the size, oh, we'll see. We'll make them really, really big and really, really big. Yes, huge, huge brakes. And the pad type and bias I won't bother with. For the under tray, I'm gonna give it a fully clad setup, which is for aerodynamics. It's not like it's a fully clad race car. It's just like, Trying to make it more aerodynamic because I know this car needs to get those miles per gallon. For the cooling and stuff, I'm not going to touch that yet unless I absolutely need to. Interior, it's going to be premium. It's not luxury. Definitely not sport. Premium is where it's at. We'll do a, a two by two setup. We're not going to have a three row in the rear. Just two and two. They're going to be like bucket seats because I like bucket seats. Entertainment, we'll match it. It's going to be premium, but it's going to be the heads up display because it's a sports car. It kind of gets permission to use a heads up display I guess you could say power steering and this is just pretty much whatever I want I guess we'll say electric that's about the average you would get all the traction control and stuff this is a vehicle from 2020 it's going to be nice and safe with its special traction control additions and then for the safety it's going to be the 20s obviously this car came out in the 2020s that's the only 20s option there is springs I have no clue this is all again, just kind of whatever I want. So how about, I almost want to give it like the active suspension, but I feel like that's overkill. So we'll go progressive. How about adaptive dampers and semi-active sway bar. So it's not an active suspension, but it's close basically. And we are done. Although I just realized it's still called model one trim one. That's not a real name for a vehicle. We got to give it a real name. It's going to be the cherry Vice, because that's real easy to say compared to the Chariot Vivasca. It's like, no, every time I have to say that name, I'm like, Vivasca, Vivasca, Vivada, Vivada. No, Vice. That's a simple word for simple man like me. Anyways, the Frenchie Vroom Vroomer has 400.4 horsepower, redline 7,000. I mean, we already know these stats. These are some good stats. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is the 0 to 60 and all that. So go to the test track. 0 to 60 is about 5.3 seconds. 80 to 120 kilometers per hour. I don't know what that means, so I don't care. Quarter mile, that's what I'm talking about. 13.6, not half bad at all. And it can actually pull a G in the corner somehow. I did not expect that. That must be all those electronic stability assistants really helping it pull through those corners, right? Uh, one thing I might want to tweak though is the fuel economy and such to make sure it's a fuel efficient vehicle. Let's see, fuel economy right now is rated at 23.6, so we did hit the goal. But can we make it better if we just kind of mess things around? Yeah, look at this. Reducing top speed, fuel economy is going up, and now it's going down. How about the spacing? Can we get some more from the spacing? Yeah. So we could put it up to like 25 miles per gallon. That's a decent jump for doing basically nothing. Seems like that's gonna be where it sticks though. We're not gonna get 
much more than that no matter what buttons we hit unless we really really want to fine tune it and you know what i'm okay with uh the way it is at 25.1 trying to go a little bit more it's it's green when you hit up so you know that's better technically right probably if we mess with the power distribution it could be better or worse right no not really it's still the same yeah i'm happy with the way this thing turned out now let's go ahead and oh why is this thing yellow? Oh, 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 problems, problems, problems. We got lots of them. Okay, first off, front dampers are hard. Let's give it a normal preset. That fixes that. The brake is way too strong and the clearance of the engine is too narrow. Well, I can't fix that. It has to have the inline five engine, but the brakes we can go ahead and fix up. So uh, yeah, these brakes, they're huge just because I could. So let's drop these down to like 14 inch brakes, see if that fixes it. Uh, clearance and the brake stuff from brake fade now. Uh-oh. Let's see. Go ahead and reduce this one too until it says less problems. Rear brake force is still high. Drop it some more. Still high. Brake force is still high. How much am I supposed to reduce this thing? Okay. But the brake stuff from brake fade. So we give it different pads. Oh, now the brake force is too high. Okay, this is one of those things just a mess of tweaking. So I'm gonna be back once I kind of get everything tweaked out where it stops giving me these warnings. There we go, what did I change? I don't really remember. But the warnings are gone except for the clearance of the engine being narrow, which like I said, can't fix. So now I'm gonna go ahead and export this to BeamNG Drive and we'll try it out. Now, because I used the normal suspension preset and I tuned the brakes to be good according to automation standards, I have a bad feeling that this vehicle suspension is gonna be way too soft and the brakes are gonna suck. Because in my experience, that is usually what happens if you listen to automation. So for the suspension, let's see. Oh uh, yeah, you can see it dips a lot. For a vehicle that's supposed to be this sporty, it should not be dipping that much. It is way too soft. And uh, next we gotta test the brakes. We'll get up to highway speeds and slam on them and see what happens. And then we'll do a comparison with a similar vehicle. So we're gonna be going about 65 miles per hour and we slam on the brakes right at that corner so we stop right there now we've got a vehicle that's similar for comparisons we'll get an etk 800 and it's supposed to be about equivalent to the tt sport because the tt sport actually has less power than the vehicle i made so we'll do one little loop around this place and then we'll compare it we should also compare the acceleration as well i think and ooh, ooh, <laughs> what, what just happened? I was flooring it the whole time. I wasn't even steering. That was weird. This is why I don't like electronic stability control. Sometimes it has no idea what's going on. Come on, electronic stability. Stop, stop cutting my power. Need my power. All right, so 65 miles per hour and slam on the brakes. Braking distance is pretty much identical. Like the difference there could just be the difference in when I started braking. Cause what I did is I tried to say, okay, right as we cross this corner where it ends is where we started braking and they lined up great. So braking is fine. Braking is perfectly fine. But look at the difference in suspension here. Look at that and then compare it to this. Like, yeah, it does do a little bit of movement but it's not like a playhouse amount of movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and tune the suspension in the Cherry Vice to be more sporty where automation is like, oh, that's too stiff. And I'm like, it's fine. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so I did a little bit of testing and it looks like the racing preset in automation is the closest we can get to the suspension in the TT Sport. So for comparisons, here's how much the suspension moves when we accelerate and decelerate with the racing suspension setup on the Cherry Vice. You see some visible movement, but not an extreme amount like it was before. And then doing the same kind of thing in the TT Sport, you can see Pretty similar amounts of movement, might even be a little bit stiffer still in this one, but it is very comparable, and that should be the suspension setup we're looking for for this vehicle. Now, let's see how well it does in the jumps with the much stiffer and lower suspension. I'm pretty sure it's going to wreck itself a little bit now, but we got to try it out. Going around the corner though, oh my goodness, does it feel so much better. Oh yeah, that's bad. The difference is when the suspension is this stiff, and this low to the ground, you're gonna smash into the ground and you really can't stop after the jump because you're gonna bounce around a little bit. So this is not really the ideal area for this vehicle. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Maybe also get a fresh one because this one is pulling to the side a bit. So driving on regular roads, 
this thing feels pretty comparable to the TT Sport. The thing is, is it doesn't have as aggressive of electronic stability control, so you can swing it around a little bit easier, but at the same time, it also seems to want to understeer a little bit more often than the TT Sport does. So it's kind of like, you win some, you lose some. So in the end though, it's a very comparable driving vehicle, and I am very happy with the performance so far of this thing. The braking performance is good, the suspension performance is good now after you don't listen to what automation tells you to do. The automation, when it's telling you those things, it's like assuming you're just kind of making a basic economy car. And that's why it says, hey, this suspension is too stiff. But if you're actually making like a hot hatch, it's okay if the suspension is too stiff because it's a hot hatch version. It's got to be stiffer than the normal version. So anyways, let's go ahead and do a little crash test. I know crash testing automation cars isn't really that interesting because the crash testing isn't that great. But here we go. Okay, okay, that's, that's why we don't really crash test automation cars. Weird things like that happen where you can tell that's not right. Like the wheels have fallen off, both of them. Car itself looked perfectly fine. Like we kind of just phased through that uh, pillar we smashed into, so that didn't really do much at all. We'll try one more crash test. This time it's gonna be a head-on collision because I think a head-on collision will actually show some damage to the vehicle. We have a beautiful wall up here. We're going about 80 miles per hour. Should be a nice solid collision. That's better. All right, now we got some damage on it. Question after that is, can it drive? That's always the question. Also, looking at my, all my work I put into that front bumper, looking like that is sad. I don't even want to look at that. So we can't really, oh yeah, we can go in reverse a little bit. We just had to free ourselves. Steering, on the other hand, is just a suggestion. You can say, hey, can you go this way? And it's like, maybe, I'll think about it. It might, might not, I don't know. So we'll just try to go as straight as we can and find another wall. There's a perfect wall over there by the gravel sign. Can we make it? Yeah, it's going surprisingly straight into the wall. In three, two, one, boom. That wall is a little bit more solid and the mirrors have shot off. Mirrors are gone. And at this point, I don't think you can really drive much at all. Yeah, steering is even worse than before. Not gonna bother trying, but it does look so sad. All my effort being smashed like this. Now, we're gonna do the speed test. Do that, grid small pier. For this comparison, we're gonna be using an ETK 800 and it's gonna be the 856 TT Sport Plus. We gotta use the Plus because that's the all-wheel drive version and I have an all-wheel drive version of my vehicle. For the other comparison, it didn't matter if we used the Plus or not because it was just about the brakes. Now, my vehicle, it weighs a bit more, but it also has more power. So I expect it to be a really close race, and I'm really hoping that the Cherry Vice is a little bit faster. So for the comparison, we're just gonna go ahead and freeze physics, accelerate on the TT Sport Plus, and then accelerate on the Cherry Vice, unfreeze physics, and see what happens. So out the gate, they are a little bit faster, but come on, Cherry Vice, there we go. Cherry Vice is slowly escaping them with its additional horsepower. It had a chance in a quarter mile, be right about probably here, and it wins. So that's gonna do it for this video. Till next time, this is YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will, I can tell based on when the real Cherry Vice comes out. So do the right thing and I'll see you next time. Also, my Cherry Vice is more durable than yours, haha. -ha.